Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. You've probably already seen this. I'm, I'm getting to it a little bit late. But this is Elder Patrick Kieran, and he is the newest apostle of the church. Uh, this just got announced today. And um, there are some really interesting things to take a look at. Uh, <laughs> it, oh my gosh. I, ju just stay tuned, okay? There, there are some things to talk about with this. So I'm going to start with this. When I heard the name... Kieran. I immediately went back a couple months to the storm that took place in Europe because guess what? The name of that storm storm was also Kieran. Spelled differently, spelled C I A R A N. You know, I, I, this is the first place I came. I just did a quick search for the name Kieran and uh sure enough, the way that he spells it K E A R O N is just a variation but it's the same name, Kieran. Um, the storm that we were, that we were watching, uh, it's spelled with this, like with an accent over the A. And uh, so I initially thought, cause I'd never seen this name in my life. I thought it was Ciaran. You know, I thought it was like, maybe like a um, French name or something like that. But no, someone corrected me in the comments and they're like, no, it's actually sp uh, pronounced Kieran. And I was like, no. There's no way. And then I looked it up. I, of course, I believe the person, but I went to BBC, uh, checked out one of their their news stories, and yeah, it's it's pronounced Kieran. And now uh, we have Elder Kieran with a different spelling. Um, let me remind you about that storm. So first, here's one depiction of it from uh, this account on X. It was a it was a major storm that came through Europe. It primarily affected France and Italy. This was just a couple months ago. In fact, this post right here is from November 2nd. So this is just like a month ago. All right. Um, here are some videos. Okay. It was like one of these crazy things that caused flash flooding, uh, cars, people being swept away, causing a lot of damage, right? Here's another one right here. Yeah, you, you have all those cars, uh, like in a car soup, just floating away. Uh, an insane thing to see in Europe, uh, from my experience. Th this is in Florence, Italy. So it was a major storm. I had my Google Earth pulled up. Um, and basically, it's this area right here. Italy, France, and then you have... Jersey over here, which belongs to the UK. Uh, there wasn't like f crazy flooding like those other places, but there was hurricane force winds. And I think there was also, I think there was also a tornado there. I can't remember. Uh, before Storm Kieran, there was all this up here from another storm, Storm uh, Babbitt, uh, which also caused a lot of, a lot of flash flooding, but that was up in the UK and a little bit in Ireland and also North Ireland. Uh, that was at the end of October. So it was basically Storm Babbitt, and then immediately after that, Storm Kieran that hit Europe. And uh, it was kind of a major event. Uh, let me go over here. I just want to read a little bit about it. Storm Kieran uh, was a European windstorm that severely affected parts of Europe from late October to early November 2023. Or in other words, just immediately before Elder Kieran got called as an apostle. Part of the 2023-2024 European windstorm season, Kieran impacted Western Europe and killed 21 people, 11 of whom were in Italy and four in France. It also caused mass disruption to transport. Widespread damage from 100 miles per hour winds were reported in the Channel Islands, while 1.2 million French households were left without electricity. And uh, if you go down here, there was like a bun there was a tornado outbreak in all these different countries, the UK, Italy, Bulgaria, Greece, France, Turkey, as a result of Storm Kieran. So that's kind of the first weird thing um, with this this happening. Uh, but there's more. There is more to look at. So stay okay. Buckle up. Okay, so this is on uh, the church newsroom. Elder Patrick Kieran called to the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. Elder Patrick Kieran is the newest member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He was called on Thursday, December 7th, 
of all days, it was on the seventh. There's been a lot of sevens lately, uh, so much that I'm going to have to probably do a video about seven. This is the latest one. December 7th, 2023, and ordained later that day by President Russell M. Nelson and the other members of the First Presidency and the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. Later on, Elder Kieran, uh, who has served as the senior president of the Presidency of the Seventy since August 2020, fills the vacancy created by the death of President M. Russell Ballard, who passed away on Sunday, November 12th, 2023. And uh, we talked about that. When President Ballard uh, passed away, we looked at where apostles typically come from. And uh, one of those places is the presidency of the 70. So I guess I guess that was the answer. It was going to be one of the members of the presidency of the 70. Okay, continuing. The British and Irish National has been a general authority 70 since April 3rd, 2010. Okay, so this is interesting. We're, we're getting quite the international collection of apostles, right? We have um, Elder Uchtdorf. Uh, of Germany. We have Elder Gong uh, that has Chinese ancestry. We have uh, Elder Suarez of Brazil. And uh, I think that's I think that's all of them. Now we have uh, a British-Irish national that's a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. So that's interesting to note, but there's more. Quote, this sacred call is so very daunting and humbling to me. I will need to place all my trust in the Savior as I seek to become what he needs me to be and share my witness of his love and light. The abundance and grace of Jesus Christ have brought immense joy into my life, as well as healing balm in times of trial. I love him. I, I will strive to serve him to the best of my ability. End quote. Elder Kieran, 62, was raised in the United Kingdom and the Middle East. Now that's another interesting bit of information. We talk a lot about the Middle East on this channel, and uh, we've kind of singled out Jeffrey R. Holland and David A. Bednar because David A. Bednar is over the Middle East. That's his area. As far as I know, it still is. And so, and he's also the one that has uh, a Jewish surname, Bednar. I keep, I keep mixing up the, I think it's from Czechoslovakia or the Czech Republic or whatever. Um, <clears throat> it's a, it's a traditional Jewish last name from there. Bednar. Don't know if he's Jewish. I don't know, but he has a Jewish surname. And then we have uh, President Holland, who was the president of BYU. He was instrumental in getting the BYU Jerusalem Center uh, established and built. Uh, he's met with Benjamin Netanyahu. So he has connections to the Middle East. Now we have this apostle that has actually lived in the Middle East. This might be important for the second coming. I'm telling you, when Christ comes and the Jews are converted, um, we're going to need to focus on the Middle East, I think. Uh, and not just the Jews, but there's probably going to be a lot of Muslims that also convert at that time. So there's going to be a big shift. We've been all we've been all around the world. You know, we've been establishing the church. Let me let me go back to Google Earth. We've been establishing the church all around the world. Let's look at the temples. You know, they're all over the place. Even in Africa, they're starting to pop up all over the place in Africa, as you can see here. Europe, South America, North America, right? Uh, the Pacific and Oceania or Australia, uh, Asia. But the Middle East, not so much. Uh, we have this one that's been announced for the United Arab Emirates. But I'm imagining that when Christ comes and there's going to be that big influx of converts, Many of them will probably be from the Middle East, these countries that we haven't been able to uh, get into. They have come to us. They've immigrated up into Europe and the United States, Canada, all over the place. So in that way, all those nations have had a chance to receive the gospel. But actually sending missionaries there, like boots on the ground, no. But I would imagine that, that that's going to be a big activity during the second coming or during the millennium, the first part of it. So maybe it's important to have uh, these type of uh, apostles and church leadership that have experience with the Middle East. Uh, and remember, I just did that video about Elder Renlin, how he said that Jeffrey R. Holland's recovery when he was hospitalized was miraculous and that the Lord still needs him for a special purpose. Maybe that's the purpose. You know, maybe that's the purpose. 
Okay, so anyway, let's continue. At age 10, he attended boarding school in England while his parents remained in Saudi Arabia. The significant trial of that separation fostered lasting insights and sensitivities that have come to mark his ministry. In his adult life, Elder Kieran lived and worked in the United Kingdom, Saudi Arabia, so not just when he was a kid, but also as an adult, and the United States in a range of industries, including running his own communication consultancy. Elder Kieran first came to an understanding of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints when he lived in California with a Latter-day Saint family. He said they, quote, lived a joyful existence founded on service, end quote. A few, a few years later, he met missionaries on the street of London and was eventually baptized on Christmas Eve, 1987. That's kind of interesting. That's interesting. Two years after his baptism, Elder Kieran met Jennifer Holm, or Holm, or Hulme, a student of Brigham Young University in Provo. She was visiting London on a six-month study abroad. The couple married in the Oakland, California Temple in 1991, and then lived in England for 19 years before relocating to Utah when he was called as a General Authority 70. They have four children, Sean, who died in infancy, Elizabeth, Susanna, and Emma. Before his call as a general authority, Elder Kieran's church assignments included Area 70, Stake President, and Branch President. Okay, just a few more things. We're getting to something pretty interesting here, so hold on. Now we're on Fox 13. LDS Church appoints new apostle after death of Ballard. While the announcement of a new apostle has traditionally been delivered during the church's semi-annual general conferences, Kieran was called and appointed to the position on Thursday, December 7th. Now, before I saw this article, I had already made note of that. I was like, wait, because I was fully expecting that we wouldn't find out or in that nobody would be called even until, you know, April, maybe March, but most likely April, um, just before general conference, because I seem to remember that's how it's been in the past. Whenever this happened, it's not like it happens every day. Um, so I don't have a perfect memory. Let me know what you were expecting. Did you expect that he that we were going to get this call so soon, or were you waiting for April? So what I wanted to do, uh, as soon as I found this out, um, as as soon as I realized that that you know he was called now in December, I wanted to know how unusual that is. And guess what? It is. Let's go to Wikipedia. Wikipedia is great for lists. So here we have Elder Patrick Kieran, um, the most junior apostle. He's at the bottom here. This is uh, ordered by seniority. And so what I did is you see this line where it says LDS Church Apostle called by Russell M. Nelson. This line for every single apostle in this dispensation, I color-coded. So if it's yellow, that means that they weren't called. We're going by the call date. That's what I'm interested in, when they were called. So if it was any other, if it was any other month other than October or April, I color it yellow to, to stand out. If it was April, then I do green because spring, green. And then October, orange because pumpkins. Okay, so that way we can easily see uh, where every, when everybody was called. So Elder Kieran, yellow. Okay, and then here you see green, green, orange, 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 green, green, orange, 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 uh, green, yellow. But the next yellow is Elder Holland, or sorry, President Holland. Very interesting. You know what makes it even weirder? You know what makes it even weirder? So we just talked about President Holland's um, recovery, his miraculous recovery when he was hospitalized, and how Elder Renlund said that the Lord still needs him for a purpose. Well, I wonder if, I wonder if Elder Kieran is called now, because what if the second coming is soon? What if it happens before General Conference? Maybe the Lord wants his quorum of the Twelve uh, completely, completely full when he comes, rather than coming and then having a vacancy. Does that make sense? Um, so, so that's where I'm kind of going with this. We're going to look at all of them. But while we're talking about President Holland, there was an interesting thing that happened 
in the uh, April 2022 General Conference. So, okay. So, Elder Kieran has only spoken three times so far in General Conference. October 2010, April 2016, and then April 2022. And guess what? He spoke immediately after President Holland. And not only that, not only that. So this was the Saturday afternoon session. And at the time, Elder Holland uh, begins his talk with a joke. And we'll, we'll go over that. And then in his talk, he says, Elder Patrick Kieran. He actually calls him by name in his talk because he was the next speaker. And then Elder Kieran responded to the joke uh, at the beginning of his talk. And this is how it it's not that often. I mean, you do you do have like, for example, you'll have an apostle that said, as Elder uh, Rasband said, Rasband said earlier today, um, you know, da 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 da, and then they uh, piggyback off of what they said, or they say what they have to say about that topic. So that kind of thing does happen, but I'm not so sure I've ever really heard anybody. I don't know. I don't think it's very often. It's not very often that you include the name of another speaker in your talk. Okay. Um, so this was the joke. So this is Elder Holland, fear not, believe only. I direct my remarks today to the young people of the church, meaning anyone President Russell M. Nelson's age or, sorry, meaning anyone President Russell M. Nelson, I can't even get through it. <laughs> meaning anyone President Russell M. Nelson's age or younger. I seldom use visuals, but I can't resist sharing this one. And then he shows a, a, a like a note written in crayon on old printer paper. This Cree decor comes from my eight-year-old friend, Marin Arnold, written when she was seven. I will translate for you. Uh, her early reformed Egyptian. <laughs> Dear Bishop, uh, General Conference was boring, so... Why do we have to do it? <laughs> Tell me why, sincerely, Marin Arnold. Well, Marin, the talk I'm about to give will undoubtedly disappoint you again. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but when you write your bishop to complain, it's important that you tell him my name is Kieran, Elder Patrick Kieran. And then Elder Kieran, who talks immediately after that, starts out by saying, Marin, I'm Elder Holland, and things are about to go downhill. <laughs> um, so anyway, isn't it interesting that there's this little exchange uh, just a year ago? You have these two apostles that were called, they were both called as apostles uh in a month other than April or October. And it they both seem to have this thing where the Lord needs them right now. I, maybe it's not for the second coming. Maybe it's some other thing, but maybe it is. And we'll just have to wait and see. We'll have to see where this goes. But it it's unusual. It's unusual. It's, it, it's not coincidental. It's unusual. Um, so let's go ahead and look at so let's go back to the list. Okay. So, so far we have Elder Kieran and President Holland. The only two that were called outside of October or April. Okay. Um, orange, 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 October. Okay. Now here's the next one and guess who it is. It's President Oaks, which is also very interesting. All apostles are important, obviously. But there are some that kind of stand out either because of their background um, or for other reasons. And I feel like both President Oaks and President uh, Holland stand out. We've talked a lot about President Oaks and how he has his legal background. He's a judge. Uh, we're about to you know, experience a big judgment of the world. Uh, before him, uh, you, have President, you have President Nelson, who's the, the heart surgeon. He's working on the heart of the church. He's creating a Zion people. And then immediately after him, you have President Oaks, um, who's the next in seniority, who's the judge. So, and he may become the next president. I don't know. But anyway, okay, President Nelson Green, Neely Maxwell, yellow. He's another one that kind of stood out. He gets quoted quite a bit. And uh, 
yeah. But anyway, yellow. Okay, orange, yellow for David B. Haight. Just, just give me a minute. I know there's some yellows. Green, orange, yellow for Marvin J. Ashton. And then green, orange, 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 green, green, orange, green, green, orange, orange, green, orange, green, orange, da 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 you can see, you know, the pattern continues. You have Melvin J. Ballard. I don't know if he's related to M. Russell Ballard, but he was a yellow. Anyway, continuing, here's a couple more yellows. One more. But now we're starting to get into, like, the pretty early church. There's still kind of like this pattern. You see all the oranges and stuff. Every here and there, there's a yellow, green. And then when you get to the very, very early church, it all turns yellow. So... Um, for the most part. Here's a bunch of greens right here. So this kind of became a thing uh, sticking to either April or October, uh, maybe 1879, thereabouts. And uh, it's really only the exception to the rule when you have a yellow. So it is rare. It's not like ultra rare, but it is rare. It's not very... It's not very common. So we have that to think about. It's very interesting. So already a lot of interesting things about other Elder Kieran. Um, okay, let's get back to this article. Uh, Kieran's work as an apostle began Friday, as the church said he would speak at the fall 2023 commencement ceremony for BYU Hawaii. Officials said Kieran would be sustained by church members at the April 2024 General Conference, of course. Okay, and then just a couple more things. This is uh, to KUTV. Um, Elder Patrick Kieran called his new Latter-day Saint Apostle. Okay, it says here, Speaking Friday to graduates at BYU-Hawaii, Kieran touched on his recent life-changing assignment. Quote, as I prepared thoughts to share with you, of course, I never imagined that I would be sharing them on the day when I would be named the newest member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. <laughs> it's staggering to me even just to say that. I slept very little last night, as you might well imagine. Yeah, what would that be like? Jeez. The timing of the announcement came fairly quickly following Ballard's death. Typically, new apostles are announced in the faith's twice-yearly general conference, which takes place each April and October. The last time an apostle was called outside that cycle was in 1994, according to Paul Reeve, chair of Mormon studies at the University of Utah. And uh, that was Elder Holland. This is the third vacancy in the 12 filled by President Russell M. Nelson, 99, who has led the faith since 2018. Not long after his call as church president, Nelson named Garrett W. Gong, a Chinese-American, and Ulyss Ulysses Suarez, a Brazilian, to the quorum. Quote, the vast majority of Latter-day Saint apostles have been born in the United States. He will be the 13th born internationally and the 6th born in England. I think President Nelson obviously sees the global nature of the faith. Well, yeah, he, he does. In fact, I wasn't going to do this, but let's go ahead and do this. I have my, uh, my phrase tracker spreadsheet, and uh, that's one of the terms that I have tracked. Let's see, let's go to timeline phrase okay control f global okay if you're new to this this is um basically where i've taken a tally of all the general conference talks that have used these words or these phrases in this case global so this year it's only been used three times but look at 2020 and 2021 probably because of uh, the, you know, the pandemic. So using the phrase like global pandemic, but when you go back in time, you don't see very much global at all. So it's not just because of the pandemic. In fact, it's not even said at all in the fifties, only once in the sixties, uh, not at all in the seventies. And so starting in like maybe 1980, uh, it starts to pick up. And then really starting with, with uh, president Monson, in 2008. But uh, even if you factor out the global pandemic, I think that President Nelson's time would still take the cake as far as using the word global. There's also, um, let's see, prepare 
the world. That's a phrase that's been used a lot recently. Okay, here you see it right here. It's pretty solid during President Nelson's time uh, with a peak in 2020. And then when you go back in time, you don't see it very much at all. Just, you know, here and there, but there's a lot of white space. So prepare the world, global. Yeah, and I think it's because we are truly about to become a global church beyond what we are right now. I'm talking about the beginning of the millennium when there's a huge influx of new converts into the church. I really think that. Um, and there, there's reason to believe that. Okay, so going back to this article that's done. Now let's go to the Salt Lake Tribune. Okay, Latter-day Saint leader known for his compassion is faith's newest apostle. Patrick Kieran, a British convert known to members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints for his compassion toward refugees and abuse survivors, was announced Friday as the faith's newest apostle. Okay, later on. His unforgettable 2016 speech about welcoming refugees uh, catapulted the previously unknown church leader into an overnight star for many Latter-day Saints. He called on his listeners to see themselves in the suffering of 1.25 million refugees flooding into Europe on a quote-unquote perilous journey to flee the ravages of war and political turmoil. Early Latter-day Saints were, quote, violently driven from homes and farms in the Midwest over and over again. Their story is our story, and not that long ago, end quote. The refugee crisis does not define today's refugees, he added, quote, but our response will help define us, end quote. Kieran has lived and worked in the United Kingdom, Saudi Arabia, and the U.S., bringing breadth and depth to his sermons. Okay, now... That could be another thing. Like I just said earlier, uh, there's been a lot of immigration. And I think that it's meant to be. Because it takes people that previously lived in a place where the gospel was not available to a place where it is. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand. I understand secret combinations. I'm not naive to the fact that these things, I think, are encouraged by the powers that be to dissolve um, values within a nation and identity, culture, traditions, and stuff like that as you're trying to manipulate the world and turn it into something new. I understand that. But at the same time, usually with any given thing that happens, good or bad, there's a good and a bad side to it. So that's the silver lining, I think, is that you have this movement of people and uh, it's made it so that many people could receive the gospel. And uh, I have this spreadsheet called Countries, where uh, in a video a long time ago, I was addressing the whole thing about taking the, the gospel to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and how there's people that expect that every single country has to have boots on the ground, missionaries in literally in every country before the second coming can happen. I don't believe that. I haven't found anything to substantiate that. It's usually based on people's private interpretation. Um, but what I pointed out on this spreadsheet is you have all these, uh, okay, above this black line right here, these are all the countries that the church does not have an official presence or does not have like, um, not an official presence necessarily, but like missionary work. They don't have missions in these countries. Somalia, South Sudan, Sudan, Tunisia, so on and so forth. Um, and what you'll notice is that um, a lot of these countries actually do have uh, branches or even stakes, uh, in some cases temples, as in the case of uh, China. It's gonna ha China's going to have two temples. Cuba has two meeting houses. Uh, I don't know if you knew that, but they do. But over in column B, um, I, got, I found this one report that shows uh, immigration numbers from 2011 to 2020. And so you can see, for example, from Afghanistan, there were 90,845 people. That's just the United States, and it's only from 2011 to 2020. So you have to take into account all the other countries where people would immigrate to, uh, seek asylum, uh, you know, whatever. So there's a lot of people moving around from all different countries 
And I feel like it's pretty safe to say that every nation, kindred, and tongue has had a, a chance to receive the gospel. I know that when I was in Spain, I came across people in Spain from all over the world. I actually kept a, um, a list, and uh, it, it w- I can't remember how long it was, but it was a lot from all over the Middle East and Asia and Eastern Europe and Africa, um, you know, they get around, there's people that get around and uh, the Lord has his hand in it. And so anyway, the point is that might be one reason why Elder Kieran is where he's at is because he, you know, thinks this way or he has experience with it or whatever. And uh, maybe that's going to be all the more important as we wait for the second coming. Not that I think that it's very far away, but, uh, or maybe, you know, he's, he's going to have some unique perspective or something during the millennium. I don't know. But for whatever reason, it seemed like he needed to be called sooner than later. I hope it's because the second coming is, is coming soon and we just need a full quorum of the 12 before the Savior comes. But we will just have to wait and see. All right, well, that's going to be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it. And I'll talk to you guys later.